Hello again, O'Doers. My name is Jose Ignacio. Today, I want to give you the 411 on landed cost. You see, when we purchase a product from a vendor, there are often additional expenses that we have to consider in addition to the cost of the actual product itself. This includes the price of shipping, taxes, and much more. These are referred to as landed costs, and it's important to keep track of them because they help us to evaluate how much of a profit we actually made by selling the product or if we actually made a profit. For example, if the price we paid for the product plus the price of the landed costs were to exceed the amount we make from selling it, we would actually be losing money. That's not good. And this can be verified on the profit and loss report. Luckily, Odo allows us to keep track of the landed costs to make it easy for us to understand the total overhead for each product that we sell. So enough chit chat, let's hop into our database now and see how all of this works. All right, before diving into the workflow, let me highlight a few settings that you're going to need to enable to make landed costs available in Odoo. So first, make sure that the accounting application is installed. I'm highlighting it here for you. Then open up the inventory application and select configuration and then settings. You're going to want to scroll until you see the heading for the section labeled as valuation. You want to make sure that the landed cost feature is checked off. If it's not, be sure to also save after you check it off. So then after you save, well, there's also something that you can do. You can specify a default journal over here where landed costs should be recorded. By default, landed costs will end up as an inventory valuation. So if you want to record landed costs differently, be sure to set the default journal here. And I can't emphasize that enough. So for today's example, we're going to be buying imported desk organizers. So up next, we should set a costing method and inventory valuation for the products category. So we're going to select configuration once again up at the top heading and underneath the products header, select categories. We're going to be working with furniture, but more specifically office. So we're going to select that category. All right. So over here on the right hand side under inventory valuation, you want to make sure AVCO average cost for our costing method is selected. This method will value products based on the average cost of each product unit, including any landed costs associated with them. If we actually wanted to, we can open up our costing method drop down right there. And you'll see that there are other options such as standard price. We also have first in first out. I'm going to discard this. That kind of allows you to select which ones depending on whichever one you want for first in first out. As an example, this uses the price of the product unit that entered the inventory first. So for landed costs to function actually properly, the costing method should be set to AVCO or first in first out, which is why I use it as an example. So next we want to make sure that the inventory valuation right below it is set to perpetual. This ensures that inventory is automatically valued every time a product enters or leaves our warehouse. If we open up this one as well. You'll notice that we also have periodic at closing as an option, which means that we need to create accompanying entries to value our inventory manually. Unless there's a reason you need to do that, it's much easier to leave it at the perpetual setting. Okay, now that we've got everything configured in the settings, Let's go ahead and take a look at the product that I've configured to represent a landed cost. This product will be added to vendor bills before we pay them to make sure that we're paying our vendors everything we owe them. So we're going to have a record of all of our expenses for that as well. So from the products top heading menu, select products and then products once again. We're going to remove the goods filter up at the top and we're going to search for imports and select our import tax product over here and open its form. So this specific landed cost represents any tax we have to pay when importing a product from another country. First, you'll notice that this particular landed cost is set to purchase only. Now, why is that? That's because it applies to imported products that we purchase. Second, you'll notice that the product type here is set to service in the center. This is because the import tax isn't an actual product that we store in our warehouse, but more of a privilege that we pay for. In this case, it's the right to import the product only. So service products can be used to represent landed costs, which we'll see in a moment. So I've also left the cost field that we have over here right now to zero. This allows me to change the amount of sales tax based on how much it costs for each order that we use it for. 
So let's open up our purchasing tab over here. And below over here in our vendor bill section, you'll notice I already see that we have the landed cost checkbox enabled right there. This makes it so I can allocate the price of a landed cost to a receipt after the landed cost has been added to a vendor bill. This checkbox only appears if the product type is a service. We should also make sure to set a default split method for this landed cost. As you can see right now, I've set this to equal. This means that the landed cost will be split evenly across each product listed in the receipt, regardless of quantity. So you, if you have an order for, let's say, three desks and two chairs and a landed cost of $10, $5 will be assigned to the desks and $5 will be assigned to the chairs. As for the split methods, we also have the ability to do by quantity, which splits the cost across each unit of all products in the receipt. So if we use our last example, $6 of the landed cost will be assigned to the desks, two for each desk, and four for the chairs, two for each chair. We also have current cost. So this one splits the cost accordingly to the cost of each product unit. So a product with a higher cost receives a greater share of the landed cost. We also have the option by weights and to that effect by volume as well. These two actually work the same way except that they split the cost accordingly to weight or volume instead of cost. So these costs will show up on the valuation adjustments tab of a landed cost form that we're gonna see in a little bit. Finally, I'm gonna discard that. We're gonna go over to our accounting tab. So this time around, we made sure to set the expense account of this tax to make sure that we are accurately tracking it in our accounting journal. You can see that right there. And that's it, the product is now fully configured to be used as a landed cost on a purchase order. Now let's purchase some products from a foreign company which will require us to pay an import tax. So for that, we're gonna head into the purchase application and select new in the top left. For our vendor today, we're going to select Woodhut and let's get started by adding our product, which is gonna be that desk organizer product. And we want 20 of them. While we're here, we should also add our import tax product as well. And we're gonna make a few quick notes on all of this. We already know that we typically get charged 10 cents import tax per desk organizer. That multiplied by 20 leads us to a unit price that should be $2. This might fluctuate though, and you can update it when you receive your bill later. Let's confirm this order now as well. And then we're gonna receive this and validate this. I'm also going to copy our nice little receipt number right there. Just a quick mental note as well, because we're gonna need this for our landed costs. I'm gonna make sure to copy that. So now let's follow our breadcrumbs back over to our purchase order and let's upload a bill selecting the button and select it from our nice little file browser. And would you look at that immediately? We've created a bill in the system. We're gonna set the bill date to today. It's also today by default anyways. So on our draft bill, let's click the button to create landed costs. And here we are. So in the landed cost form, the import tax landed cost is actually already automatically there. And that's pretty cool. Let's also associate our warehouse receipt with this landed cost inside of our nice little transfers field. So we're gonna search for the one that I talked about earlier. And there it is. That makes it a whole lot easier. Perfect. This field only works with validated receipts as well. So keep note of that. Now that the transfer is added, we can update the actual cost according to the bill on this form, as well as the account for the landed cost and where it should be posted, if that has to be changed as well. We're gonna select compute down here in the bottom left, and I promise you something happened. Then let's hit validate. Boom, more things have happened. When we open the evaluation adjustments tab over here, we can see how this affects our inventory valuation. The original value was $50, but when we factor in this additional landed cost that we have over here, I'm gonna stretch it a little bit, but trust me, it's right there. Actually, I could just shrink this so you can see this. I just like to make sure that you can see the full words. Perfect. Additional landed costs over there at $2. We have this new value, $52. And just like that, the value of our desk organizers has been updated to include both the cost of the units we have as well as the landed costs assigned to them. That's all for today, folks. You now know how to create a service product that will act as a landed cost and how to assign landed costs to items received into the inventory. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. I'm having a snack today of penguinos.